Mori 6 was just rolled out. With it comes not just a new roller brush, but also updates to the USD workflows introduced in Mori 4.8 and 5. And while we're on the subject of features, Foundry was friendly to all of us stuck in old pipelines. They backported the planned teleporter node scheduled for Mari 6 into 4.8 and 5 series before Mari 6 was even released. It almost feels like a case of time traveling, something I've done in an earlier episode. Let's take a look at some of these workflows in action. First up, the USD enhancements. We see a lot of bug fixes to the USD project create dialog. Actually, some of the features that was there now actually work. Be it, it's still quite hard to interact with some of these settings. For example, switching variants is not as easy as I would like to see. I really hope that Foundry rethink the whole concept how we import USD into Mori. But now, let's quickly jump into the new USD features. We can now assign materials and also export USD and texture straight into your favorite DCC. In my case, I'm using Houdini Renderman, and this is how you do it. So I'm importing this Renderman teapot that I got from the Renderman resource repository. It's already in USD format. In this version of Mari, there's a bug slash oversight in how UVs is handled when exporting to USD. At the moment, in Solaris and Renderman at least, it seems to work best using ST as the UV set. The model ships with map 1 UV. So what I did was to open the USD file in ASCII format and I renamed map1 to ST using a text editor. So now when I import the altered scene I get ST as default UV set. And I also checked the create phase selection group per mesh here. This will make more sense in a bit. I'm going to use the pixel surface as I use Renderman. And here you can see me. I'm created a few basic materials. So in this new work for you can assign shaders to the face selection groups and we previously imported them, right? Or you can just export a complete asset using a single shader with material blend nodes. It's up to you really. Using the face selection group method first as a demo. First I hit the plus button to add a material here and in the pixel surface field I choose the specific material or shader I created. The shader needs to have at least a channels or bake point connected to export properly. And now here to assignments. Using this button here I can assign the material to specific path. These are the paths we previously imported in the import dialog. And now I add another material, a plastic to another set of selection groups. Next up, I choose where I want to save the textures to and where the assembly and look file will be saved to. The assembly is the asset with the added material assignments. In other pipelines, an assembly is a collection of component assets. It's a bit confusing, I must say. Next, I point the UST asset we brought in as the payload file here in this dialog. We also want to look in the UST file for the root primitive name. We want this to match what's in the UST file. And for UV here, in my case, ST will only work for UV set at this time when using Solaris and Renderman. And now I hit export and then let's jump over quickly to Houdini and check what happened. Here in Solaris, I sublayer my asset and add a dome light. Let's fire up the Renderman delegate and see what happened. Woohoo! We have a teapot with design materials. Now let's take a look at doing this again with the single shader and blended materials instead. And now back in Mori, I have now constructed some basic materials. We have some breakup, a plastic material and a decal layer. And now re-export out and see what we get. Woohoo again! It worked! Cool! But I have to be honest about something. I found a lot of bugs in this initial release. One of them is materials with normal displacement or bumps won't translate properly. This is part derived from the fact that materials themselves is using the Mari normal bump and displacement section. This is not actually native to the vendor shaders. I bet it gets fixed in upcoming releases as it's really hard to imagine materials without any bump, normal or displacement. Now let's take a look at the roller brush. So I made a quick tileable texture here from a ceramic bowl I want to roll out. Using the new roller brush in the tool properties I browse for the texture. I can choose if I want to use a specific channel or RGBA as a brush tip. 
you have to choose if the tip should be tallable or horizontal or vertical. And there is also segment slider. More segments will result in smoother interpolation of the curve. So now you can start to paint nice repeating patterns on the teapot. This is a really great addition and I can see this being developed even further for additional effects in painting. Did someone say time travel? As I previously mentioned, the teleporter nodes was originally intended as Mori 6 feature. And for all of us users locked to Mori 5 or even 4 series, Foundry sneakily back introduced the Mori 4.8 and 5 series before now releasing them as a new feature in Mori 6. Isn't that the definition of time travel? So the new teleporter nodes works very similar to more extension pack radio nodes, except they have a few more bells and whistles attached to them. You can, for example, use them for subgroups and use live data streaming into procedural or material nodes. It's a great addition to the toolset. I previously covered all of this in the radio node is dead episode linked in the corner now or in the video description. Lastly, we also saw updates to the new shelf that now supports execution on Python scripts from the shelf. I guess this will be one of those things that will be used in larger pipelines mainly. Make sure to leave your comment what you think about the new features and what you would like to see in upcoming Mori versions. Happy painting. Bye bye.